Hello everyone, I'm Kyle. I'm one of the engineers here at Franklin Armory. Today we're going to be going over the GS173, how to install it and how to do the dry test uh, before you can go and live fire it. The tools you will need for this is only one punch. It's a 3 30 seconds punch. Uh, you can also use a 1 16th or a 5 64th, but I prefer a 3 30 seconds. Before we get started, we're going to go over the parts that we need to assemble this. First, we'll go over the OEM parts. We have our Glock 17 Gen 3 frame. Then we have our barrel, our recoil spring assembly, our slide stop, our trigger pin. It is a middle pin that is a little bit big. We have our locking block pin that is also metal and our plastic uh, trigger housing pin. So that's all the OEM parts first. Next, we will go over all the parts that Franklin provides. We have our uh, GS173 slide assembly that is completely assembled and our trigger assembly that is also completely assembled. All right, so the next step we'll do is install the trigger into the frame. So we'll set aside the slide and other OEM components so that we have a little space here. So we have the uh, trigger assembly and the frame. On the trigger assembly, we have a red rubber band that is holding the trigger bar to the trigger housing. Now we'll take the rubber band off. So we'll take our index finger and our thumb and we will pinch the trigger bar and the housing so that they stay together while we take the band off. We will pull the rubber band off while alter I usually alternate my hands to make it a little easier. Now that we got the rubber band off, we will now install it in the frame. We will take the trigger and push it down into the trigger hole here. It might be a little difficult, so you will, might have to wiggle it a little bit to get it in. There we go. Then we will push the trigger housing in the rear back into its slot here. And now I have it installed in the frame. All right, now that we got the trigger assembly in the frame, we will now put in the OEM trigger housing pin. It is a plastic pin. Uh, when you're putting it through, you may need to wiggle the trigger housing a little bit. I usually use the ejector here to wiggle it. So we'll take the pin and put it in through the left side here. So we'll push it almost all the way through and then we will take our 3 30 seconds punch and we will punch it right here so that it is centered in the frame. Alright, next we will take the OEM slide stop and we will insert it on the left side of the trigger here. So we will take it and insert it here so that it sits in its normal position like it would be on an OEM Glock. Next, we will insert the trigger pin. It's the large metal pin. Uh, when you install the trigger, your locking block uh, could come out a little bit. So make sure that's pressed down. And then we will take the pin and push it in through the right side here. You'll have to wiggle the trigger around a little bit and also your um, slide stop. So you'll push it almost all the way in and then just like the other one, we will take the 3 30 seconds punch and push it so that it is centered in the frame. All right, next we will install the locking block pin. It is the small metal pin. Uh, pay close attention to this one because we wanna make sure that the spring tail from the slide stop goes under this pin. So we will start by installing it from the right side of the frame. We'll start pushing it through like so. And then about halfway through, you will see that the pin is starting to get close to the spring tail here. So what we will do is push the spring tail down with your punch. So we'll push the spring tail down and push the pin across so that it is over the spring. And then we will put this down also and use our 3 30 seconds punch to push the pin in halfway. And you can see that the spring tail is now underneath that pin. It's very important that that's that way. And the way you can check that is you can pull your slide stop up and it should go back down with a little bit of force. Now that we've installed the trigger assembly in the frame, we will set the frame aside and then take our uh, GS173 slide. We will flip it upside down so we can see the bottom of it here. 
and we will take our OEM barrel, and just like the standard Glock OEM, we will take the muzzle end and push it through the muzzle end of the slide, like so, and then push it down, uh, and then slide it back so that it goes into its locking surface like this. You'll see it's flush on top here and down here. Next, we will install the recoil assembly. So we would take our barrel assembly here, and the recoil assembly, and the small plastic end, we will place through the lug on the front here. So we will place it in there like that. Then you will need to depress the back a little bit. So you'll push it down, or push it forward, and then down in, so that it locks into the barrel, just like an OEM Glock. All right, now that we've got the trigger assembly assembled into the frame and all of the side components, we are now ready to put them together. A cool thing about the GS173 is we have cuts on each side of the slide here that line up with two slide rails here. So we will take our frame and our slide and line up those like so. Place them down there. We will start pulling it back and we will take our trigger finger and push the trigger forward and then pull the slide all the way to the rear and then let it go back forward and it should be locked onto the slide. All right, now that we've got the trigger assembly assembled into the gun, we want to make sure that the firearm works on dry testing before we go and live fire it. But before we do that, we want to make sure that the firearm is empty. So we'll check the chamber, make sure there's no ammunition in the chamber and no magazine in the magwell. Uh, there are seven tests that we will be doing for this dry test and uh, we'll get into it. All right, for the first test, we will do the binary function test. Before we start that, we want to make sure that the slide is wrecked and the trigger is forward with the selector in the binary position, we will first pull the trigger. We'll hear the striker drop. We will rack the slide to reset the trigger and then release the trigger. And we want to hear the striker drop again. The next one we will do is the slow release binary reset test. Uh, before we start that, we want to make sure that the trigger is reset. So we will rack the slide, make sure the trigger goes back forward, uh, make sure that the selector paddle is still in the binary position. We will then pull the trigger and hear the firing pin drop, rack the slide. We will slowly release the trigger. We want to listen for that click. That's the first click. That's the trigger resetting. And then slowly release until the gun fires as well. The next test we'll do is the cancellation. So just like the ones before, we will rack the slide and make sure that the trigger is reset. With the selector still in the binary position, we will first pull the trigger. The striker will drop. We will wrap the slide. And with the trigger finger still holding the trigger back, we will take the selector and select it from binary into the semi position. We will then release the trigger and make sure you don't hear the striker dropping. Our next test is the semi-automatic test. Since we just did the cancellation test, the trigger is already reset because there is no shot on release. So we want to make sure that the selector is still in the semi-automatic mode. We were, will start by pulling the trigger all the way to the rear until you hear the striker drop. Then we will rack the slide and then release the trigger and the striker does not drop. So that test worked. All right, next we will do the pre-travel take-up test. Uh, since we just did the semi-automatic mode, the trigger is already reset and we don't need to rack the slide. We'll come up here to the selector and switch from semi into binary mode here. Then we will start pulling the trigger. We will get about halfway back and then we will let go of the trigger and the trigger should sit in this middle position here. We will finish this off by pulling the trigger completely, hearing the striker drop, rack the slide, and then release the trigger and we will hear the striker drop again. All right, now we will do the trigger reset test. From the last test, since we had a uh, release shot, we will have to rack the slide to reset the trigger again. So now that the trigger is back forward, we will make sure that the selector is in the binary position. We will pull the trigger like normal until it fires and we'll rack the slide and then we will let the trigger go forward. We will hear the reset and then we will hear it fire. We will want to hold our trigger finger in that fired position, then rack the slide, and you will feel a little bit of pressure from the trigger 
uh, and we want to let it go all the way forward and make sure that it sits in the forward position. All right, the last test we'll do is the lock back trigger reset test. So we'll make sure that the trigger is in the forward position so we don't need to rack the slide. With the selector in the binary position, we will pull the trigger until it fires. We will slide back the slide and push the slide stop up so that it's locked back. Then we will let go of the trigger and then hit the slide stop here. And we want to make sure that the trigger goes back forward and is ready to be pulled again. All right, now that the firearm has passed all of its seven dry fire tests, you can go out and live fire it in the field and enjoy your GS-173. GS-173's trigger assembly comes with a red rubber band that is wrapped around the trigger bar and the housing. In the event that they come apart, I want to show you how to put it back together really easily. Alright, so if your trigger assembly comes apart by the trigger bar coming off of the trigger housing like this, uh, you'll just put the trigger bar and trigger aside. And we have three parts that need to come out. It'll be the plunger and spring, so I'll turn this upside down so those come out. So you see the plunger and spring. And then on the back side here, we have a torsion spring. We will take a punch or a pick and pull out the torsion spring, like so, and then pull it out of the system. So those are the only parts that need to come out to put it back together. Okay, so we have our three parts out that we need to do to put back together. All right, so we'll take our plunger and plunger spring and put the plunger in the spring like that and then place it in the hole in the top of the housing here. We will then take our trigger bar and you'll have to push the plunger down a little bit here. So we'll push it down and then over. You'll wanna make sure that this little nub is in this little chevron here and that this front piece on the trigger bar is behind this piece and the little wing on the trigger bar has gone through the slot in the housing. Okay, and then we will flip this around. We will make sure we're pinching it. We will then take the torsion spring, which has a long tail and a short tail. The long tail will go through the slot in the housing in front of the wing on the trigger bar here and over the pin there. Okay, so once we get the trigger, uh, the torsion spring here, we'll then take a punch, and I find this easier to go up against your chest like so. You will take the punch, and I usually use one of my fingers to hold the, the torsion spring in place, and then you will push the small tail over until it gets into, oh wow, this is, push the small tail over, and down into the little section here and then push the trigger, or the torsion spring all the way down. You'll wanna continue to pinch this together and we'll flip it around here and you can then put it into your frame. And once you have pushed the trigger housing down all the way into the frame, the frame should hold 